Hello you lot, just so you know, um, I am very excited about this, so I'm going to jump straight into it. So I have not done anything, I've had a package arrive, um, I haven't poked at it, I haven't lift up, lifted up the corner, I haven't so much as even felt how heavy it is really. Um, so I'm going to put this on the bench and I'm going to open it up, but all you need to know um, is this little bag of goodies is going to open a whole can of worms and something I hope you're going to be really interested in. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun if I can pull this off. Um, I really genuinely hope I do. Now, just before I do open this, without carrying on suspense too much longer, um, this is not something that I thought of five seconds ago. Um, it's not even something that I've done just specifically for the channel. So, um, you will remember the very first video that I ever did for this, if you've been watching the videos since I started, I took my little silver 900cc Synchrotrain 02 Kerber Sprint Circuit, because uh, the turbo behind me wasn't ready, still isn't, um, had the, literally the best time ever. It drove... Uh, what well, they do two hours there two hours back drove around the track all day on half a tank of fuel didn't even splutter not even the tiniest little hint of a problem um, and i loved it before that but i love it even more now i've got such a soft spot for that car it's unbelievable and i thought do you know what from that point i thought i need to start doing something a bit interesting with this car because it deserves it 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 takes everything i fry i drive it all the time um but, but you know it's got 35 horsepower so we need to sort that out and i thought i've been saying this whole time little hints, little, oh, I've got a little bit of plan, and I have been, I've been planning, I've been speaking to a lot of people, I'm not turboing it, I'm not turboing it, because I've already got a turbo, so rule that out now. So I'm gonna turn the camera around, got my trusty knife, I'm gonna get the box up on the counter, we're gonna open this, and you're gonna see it the exact same time that I see it. I'm not really big into box openings, but because I'm so excited about this, I figured I would just do it first. So let's just stop the talking, Benjamin, get your knife, and crack open this box. Uh, now I'm not entirely convinced I've got a particularly good camera angle for this so you'll have to bear with me but I'm going to open it up on the floor and I will get a little bit more detailed shots once we get it up there but I am as excited as you are. Now um, as luck would have it I've had a few fortuitous uh, circumstances come up recently um, which I will go into at some point um, but at the end of all that uh, good fortune that I was seeing um, I had this watched on eBay for quite a long time only when I finally decided I was going to take the plunge um, to get a message that morning on eBay, get a notification to say that the seller had knocked off about 30%. So, I mean, if that's not a, uh, if that's not a good excuse to do something, I don't know what is. So, do you know what, I don't think we need to take all that off. So I totally took it as a sign from the car gods that it was time to take the plunge. And like I said, there is actually a very interesting story that will probably come off the back of this at some point. But quite frankly, I'm too excited to be uh, opening this now. Well, one thing is, it's definitely well packaged. Which is not a bad thing, even if you are a bit of an eco-warrior like me and you hate plastic packaging. I will save all this. That's something I would really urge all of you to do. If you ever buy anything off Amazon and stuff, keep the packaging and then use it to sell anything else. Oh. Well, that's it. In there. Wow, that's a lot of packed bubble wrap. Let's get on the desk. Not that I want to be annoying and to uh, take too much time with this, but I'm just going to turn around when I take this bubble wrap off. You know, maximum effect, because they have put more bubble wrap on this than I'm sure Amazon uses in about a decade. That's a good sign. Looking pretty tidy. Come on, come on. <laughs> He's only gone and bought a supercharger. That is right, my little worn out racers. I have bought a supercharger and I'm supercharging the slug, or at least I will do a little disclaimer here. I have planned and I've detailed and I've drawn and I've looked at it and I've stared at this spare engine, which is now moved down to the business end of my uh, garage rather than being down the back. And in theory, I've got all the principles in place. I know where I'm gonna mount it, I think because I needed to get it in my hand to see whether it would actually fit. Um, I know I'm going to control the fueling. Uh, I know I'm going to do some of the other supporting mods. I think I've got a good idea of what sort of power I think I'm going to be able to make with it. Um, now some of you, straight away, I'm sure, I'm sure of it, 
are going to be saying to yourselves, why the hell would you supercharge a 35, actually you know, 39 horsepower, 900 cc engine when you could just put another one in it? And honestly, I've got no better answer for you than because I want to. Like, it's purely for fun. Like, I know I could rip that little 900 cc out of that uh, Cinco Cheno, put a put no 60 in there, uh, put no 75, anything. Little 16 valve, uh, you know, apart from the messing around with the wiring and stuff, it wouldn't be too bad a conversion. But, you know, and I no disrespect to anyone who's done that, it's been done quite a bit. Like, I'm all right with it. I've got a turbo one. Um, this is my properly fast car, hopefully, when it's done. This is the one that will always get all the kind of development, um, always the sort of main big money on it. But I've always said that the slug is always my hand-me-down car um, or the one that I just kind of like, just do whatever I feel like with it. Styling-wise, mods, I don't mind cutting a bit of corners, like some quirky little parts and mods for it, or bits, bits even people have given me for free. I mean, the spack shots on the back of it I got for nothing. Um, so if I grab this, you will see this little engine here, which I picked up ages ago, um, and you would have seen me put this on an engine stand a long time ago and hinting at my um, ideas. Um, that's what I'm going to be mocking it up on. So the plan, this is the plan, my chums. I'm going to use this engine to mock up actually mounting the supercharger. Can I mount it in the way that I think I want to? Um, because that's it. That's the main thing, really. Everything else, absolutely doable. Like all the fuel control stuff, I know that works because I've been uh, speaking to some people on that. Rory, actually, specifically. Um, I know about like, these are really low compression engines, so I should be all right to run a little bit of boost. Um, I also know the limitations of it. My mate Claudio is pretty clued up on these. My Italian mate Claudio, so he's uh, already warned me on a few sort of weaknesses with the uh, crank supports and stuff like that. So, you know, I've done my research, but the actually physically mounting that charger onto this spare engine is going to be key. Because obviously if it doesn't fit, it ain't boosted. So, um, but like you can see there, look, here's my little charger. It's actually quite a small unit, um, which is the reason I chose this. Now this is a charger from the twin charged Volkswagen Skodas. This is actually the VW one specifically. I don't know whether it's any different like badging or anything on the Skoda. Um, so this is on the 1.4 TSI. Um, so again, it's not really intended to run a lot of boost. It's just there to sort of help kick the turbo off, um, lim eliminate lag and all that kind of side. So I mean, really, realistically, I'm probably gonna be aiming for, I don't know. I reckon probably whatever their stock PSI figure is, generally on one of those TSIs, maybe like 7 PSI or something like that. It's a bit hard to tell really at the minute. Um, but I think it'll be all right. I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for doubling the power. So if I can get 70 out of this, 75, I'll be happy. I think to be fair, even 60. I've always said it. I'd love the slug as it is. I mean, even with 5 horsepower more, I'd be buzzing. But obviously with all this effort, I don't want it to only have 5 horsepower more, do I? There's a few ideas I've got. Um, like I said, with a turbo, um, generally speaking, when you come off the throttle, you have a dump valve or not, if you like the turbo chow, and it releases all that boost pressure. Now with a supercharger, it's different. So when you come off the throttle, obviously the revs are still going down because it's driven by a belt. Um, it's still trying to create boost and push air into your engine. So usually, uh, like on a new Mini or something, like, that, or like the you know, new style Mini, I should say, the old supercharged ones, um, they had a diverter valve. Um, so basically when on certain throttle positions or whatever, when it used to come off, it would open up that diverter valve and it would re redirect all that um, boosted air back into the inlet. So that is something I need to consider. There's lots of little niggles and things like that that I'm not going to know until it actually comes to running it. But I think I've got a pretty decent plan. There's a couple of you out there um, that I've already showed the sketches to because quite frankly, I was far too excited um, and I needed to tell someone about it. Um, but otherwise, like I said, I've got future plans as well i've got a few things coming so i think really i just want to get it running bone stock bone stock engine bone stock everything with the charger on it just running minimal boost um, and just see what gives up um, and then what works what doesn't work and then effectively then go from there build on it and see how fun but the most important thing about this is i'm gonna have as much fun as i can i'm not gonna get weighed down with making it perfect or getting like zinc plated bolts or anything like that man it's going to go on there i'm going to speak to the people that i need to speak to that are you know in the know i'm not going to try and work all this out on my own um it really was meant to be a sort of low budget conversion now that supercharger cost me 90 pounds so it's 130 and i got 40 quid off it so um it's done like a hundred thousand miles which isn't ideal but they're so readily available i figured you know what i'll get a cheap one if at some point 
it starts to show that it's running a bit like worn out and it ain't quite making the boost it's supposed to be, I'll buy another one. You get a mint one with like 30,000 miles on it for 200 odd quid. So whatever, I'll go with it. Um, I think the fueling setup I've got, um, that's not going to cost me a lot of money. I've been speaking to my man Rory about it. He's taken me through all of it. That's going to be pretty cheap, hopefully. Uh, one of the most expensive things I'm going to have to buy is a wideband. Um, I've got the wideband on this already. Um, I'm probably going to go for the Audi Performance one instead of the AM one, just see which one I prefer. If I like the Audi Performance one more, I'll probably nick it and stick it on this and whack the AM one on here. Um, because of the type of fuel that I'm going for, that wideband is going to be really important because um, it's going to be quite a basic setup, so I need to make sure that I keep an eye on it. But the nice thing is, because it's a supercharged setup, um, it's consistent. You get basically similar boost at similar revs. So at least with a turbo, you know, you, with a little bit of throttle position and stuff, your PSI and boost settings are going to be all over the place, um, depending on what sort of throttle position and stuff you run and what load. But this should be a little bit more consistent. So I'm confident I'm going to be able to get it set up. Am I upgrading the brakes? No. Am I upgrading the suspension anymore? No. I don't think I need to, quite frankly. I think it's absolutely fine as it is. But if I do, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But come along for the ride. I'm going to be doing this as its own separate series. Um, it'll probably have its own little mini intro and stuff. I haven't quite come up with a name for the series yet. Um, I'll be honest, I was going to call it the Super Slug. It makes sense. The car's called the Slug and it's called the Super Slug. Let me know what you think. I think it's, uh, I actually kind of like it. Um, but there's a few more other ideas banging around. But otherwise, I have spoken for, quite frankly, too long as it is. But I'm far too excited about it. So I've been sat on this literally for months, this idea. And it's been bugging me that I've not been able to share it. But I didn't want to go around swinging things without actually having anything to back it up. Um, so, yeah. And I'm excited to say as well, there's going to be a whole new rebrand of the uh, of the channel. Um, I've been coming up with a load of sketches and drawings for how I want the logo to look. Um, and I'm going to be doing all that. And I hopefully will have some sort of intro video as well, like a proper one. Um, again, not to take it too seriously, but you know, I'm going to try and do, do a few things a bit better than this, but let me know what you think. Tell me if you think I'm nuts. It's fine. It ain't going to stop me doing it anyway. Tell me if you think it's an awesome idea. Um, I know that the late 199s are very popular, but I'm accumulating a few of them at the moment, just in case I absolutely grenade one. Um, but I would love it if someone else wanted one of these converged at some point after watching me. But I will say as well, this principle, all the principles I'm going to be showing you, the main point of this is to A, show you you can do it on a budget if you're clever and you try hard enough. B, that actually a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing for this um, is transferable, not even just between Cinque Tenos. Like the general fundamentals of this is something that you hopefully um, would be able to translate into, you know, most basic engines, even the 8 valve. I mean, there'll be some slight differences, um, but uh, yeah. So definitely keep an eye on this. I'm going to try and keep it relatively short and sweet. So the plan is, I said, I'm going to build it on this engine, keep driving the slug, all the supporting mods and the changes, like putting the intercooler and stuff on that, I'll fit to the slug um, while I'm still driving it. The intercooler will be fitted. Um, I can kind of vaguely route some of the pay, uh, pipe work, uh, some of the wiring I can do. Uh, I can do some of the other little mods I need that I, that I anticipate I'm going to need to actually fit this. Um, I'm going to be able to make most of it, like I said, on this engine. And the plan will be then, take the slug off the road for a matter of days, hopefully, bolt all the stuff off this engine, onto the slug, wire it all up, whack it down the rolling road and see how we get on. Um, if it blows up, cry and have a little tear for a moment, stuff another engine in it, and then just fix whatever it is it clocked out the first time. So but with that, I will promise to stop talking now. Um, I'm going to go away and I'm going to have a little mess around with this now and see whether my idea is even vaguely feasible because I literally haven't even held it up to the engine so this video might be completely pointless when I hold it up and realise it's not going to fit. But thanks a lot people. Um, I hope you're as excited about this as I am or at least some of you. Um, and thanks to all of those that have helped it become a reality so far. So uh, yeah, see you for the next one.